I know that this gaggle of orchids that you see in front of you, <laughs> they don't exactly display orchids that are perfectly grown, but oh my goodness, despite having cold damage, loss of leaf, decaying pseudobulbs, magnesium deficiencies, some scale damage, some sunburn, including non-bloomers. Yes, this gaggle of orchid is a bit of a mixed bag, but I've kind of concentrated into this gaggle here because, well, some of them we haven't seen this entire season, but something's been going on, and that is what I want to share with you in this video today. Double whammy is on the thumbnail for a reason, and I hope you stay. <laughs> There really is no particular order in what I want to show you today, but why not start with the one that I expected to lose already in February of 2023, and yet here she is still in October 2023, at least at the point of filming. So if she were to collapse completely on us, we have these images to see how she tried to come back from obvious decline due to the cold temperatures during my winter. Anyway, if you see any scale on here, then know that it has all been treated, so there should be only dead bodies. What I'm seeing down here, I am telling you, that was not there this morning. When I organized that shelf, the shelf in question today being on the east side, the middle shelf and one of the lower shelves, just checking orchids that, well, need a lot of checking, as is my Sunya Green mailman, if I didn't mention that. Anyway, the history of this orchid has been well documented, especially in the series set back. Look at this. So, okay, we noticed that a growth grew. It's very, very flimsy at the base, and that's going to be another video if it's maybe rotting, it's far too flimsy, but <laughs> I don't even know if the roots are viable anymore. However, this orchid is not giving up, so neither will I, because we have another new growth coming. Double whammy on this one. So if I see any signs of new root growth, in case this growth right here isn't exactly rotted, we will be dealing with this orchid before the winter really kicks in, and then we'll see what she does. I would like to remove at least these pseudobulbs back here. Oh, she's still got energy left here, I know. It doesn't look like it, but there is. They don't look like this, so anyway, double whammy. I am very surprised. We'll see how far this is going to last and where it's going to take us. It is so good to have you here. I appreciate that you stayed. I appreciate your interest. Let me know if you have any questions when it comes to any of the orchids I'm showing you today about their care, etc. What do I do? Comments are there for a reason and I would love to hear from you as well as would you please like this video because I have had some detrimental issues in my collection during this season. It's just nice to see some orchids doing well even if they haven't bloomed and even if they may not bloom for us for a very very long time. Speaking of non-bloomer cat via Dawiana. Hmm, nothing much to see here, right? Wrong. Very happy to show you this growth that grew in the season of 2023. Not a growth that bloomed for us, but I'm always excited to see growths that develop nicely and then grow beautiful roots. But what is she doing? Can you see this? <laughs> a second new growth back to back. I can't believe it. She's never done this before. And if she did start a second new growth, it was so far into the distance of the other growth maturing that it was almost like midwinter, end of winter, where I couldn't exactly treat the growth nicely to get it to strength and size. But this time she just went from one growth and bam, the next one popped out. Isn't that awesome? I really don't mind if she doesn't bloom on this one. The fact that she grew this one back to back during a season where I could still fertilize and be aggressive with the fertilizer. This is amazing. Look at this. The size of the sheath here matching where the pseudobulb will be. And yet the growth hasn't even finished progressing entirely. This made me so happy. Katlia Dawiana doing well and I love her even if she hasn't bloomed for us yet. My Lelia purpurata is representative of all my other Lelias as well because they all bloomed for us the beginning of the season. This one, the blooming didn't last very long, so I was wondering, well, what's up with that? Of course, reason for concern. So that's this growth right here. 
then I did take the blooms off prematurely because I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just gonna give you enough time to rest and we'll see what happens. I let all my other perforatas bloom out but again, as a representative, all three of them are growing their second new growths already. And already means that shortly after blooming was done, they took a little bit of a rest and boom, the next new growth started. That has never happened with these orchids in my collection. Usually, again, I am struggling with them starting to develop new growths as the winter is progressing. I'm not even gonna specify a month because no light, very limited fertilizer, so when is a growth going to start? When is it going to stop? In this case, look at the progress of this growth. It is just like, wow, so happy. Again, I can fertilize at liberty and I am, and I'm pumping in calcium and magnesium as we speak in preparation for what's to come. But this is amazing for me. I don't care if it takes until May, June 2024 for this orchid to bloom. The fact that I'm seeing my perparatas do this so early Meanwhile, this growth is much, much more advanced and has progressed much further than, for example, my striata, but, you know, whatever. This is awesome. I'm so, so happy. I am also going nuts over my beautiful Durigan Crucero do Sul. Beautiful to me. Behold, she doesn't look the part. We've got sunburn. We've got deficiencies. All these things I'm trying to dial in when an orchid arrives new in the collection. And yeah, you would think she's an OG by now, but she only arrived in 2021. So I'm learning about her and ugh, she needs her magnesium. I get it, I'm trying, I'm learning. But <laughs> Durigan has bloomed ever since she arrived in my collection. So that wasn't the problem. Except that this year, oh, I was so happy. I saw four buds and I thought, yay, we've reached another milestone and we've seen a little bit more scale, even though I've wiped all the leaves. Anyway, I thought, yay, four buds. This is going to be spectacular. Turns out <laughs> she bit off a little bit more than she could chew, so she blasted one bud, and I thought, never mind, we'll have three gorgeous blooms. Turns out, just like with my purpurata, well, they didn't last very long. They didn't open properly. They looked a little bit weakish. So I made the executive decision on the patio, and I took the blooms off prematurely. Well, weather this second new growth is going to bloom or not remains to be seen. This is a first though. Usually by let's say February, March, I am starting to pump calcium nitrate into her because her new growth, this one right here, the one I thought we were gonna have blooming beautifully, that one starts around that time of year for it then to bloom later in the summer. And this is also a first, she has never grown a second new growth within the same season. I am absolutely doing cartwheels around the patio with emojis only, physically not able to do so, but check this out. Look at this growth. It is already starting to mature, so you can imagine how quickly back to back after I took the blooms off, this new growth appeared and I was like, yay, I don't mind. I'm gonna have more roots in the pot. This is awesome. Look at this thing. I wasn't exactly sure how to handle this, so I decided, you tell me what you think. I'm blown away absolutely loving it. I doubt very much it's going to bloom, but dang, this is going to add strength to the orchid. And of course, I'm really being diligent as well about the magnesium now. Tis the season, tis the weeks of putting Epsom salts into these orchids. I cannot revive the back growth that she came with, where I didn't know how much of the calcium, how much of the magnesium she actually needs. So if you have a duty gun and if you're in doubt, take it from me. Give this orchid <laughs> as much magnesium as you possibly Really can because subsequent years when she's been with me, she's been drawing from her reserves because I was being a bit stingy. So I'm hoping to improve that. But I'm getting again way ahead of myself. I don't want to be greedy. This to me is amazing. What a double whammy from a bifoliate, even double leaved. <laughs> so happy. I appreciate you so much. And if you would like to subscribe to the channel, consider yourself welcome on board. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. But wait, there is more. This is my Catlia Arastrea. <laughs> a gift from the orchid room and well we were already in for a surprise at the beginning of the season because she grew four new growths that I was hoping would bloom for us. <laughs>
Everything that has a sheath on it is a new growth, with the exception of the one in the back, which is semi-peeled, but see that? So I was hoping this is the year that one of the new growths would bloom. <laughs> Every growth has a sheath, but nada. Let me just check, is there one poofy? Nope, nada poofy. But what is getting me all poofy is the fact that she is already growing three new growths. So a uh, triple whammy in this case, I'm not gonna include the quadruple whammy at the beginning of the season, triple whammy. This has never happened before either. One, two, three. Now I could also say, ahem, where is my fourth growth, right? Uh, I'm not gonna go that far. She is alive even though she is a non-bloomer and she is doing this for us. I find it absolutely spectacular. I have never been so excited about growing orchids that don't bloom. <laughs> trust, trust. The anxiety is building for the winter. I am so excited the orchids are alive. And with that, it gives me hope. So isn't that amazing? She doesn't quite fit the double whammy category, but uh, I'll take a triple whammy. Wouldn't you? <laughs> what about this beauty then? Maybe we should fit her into the frame. Let me just scooch you back a teeny tiny bit so that you can see what I am seeing. And this is my golf green hair pig. Golf green hair pig had me extremely concerned because the new growth that it grew after it was blooming had a rot issue. And I was like, say what? Why? We had passed the winter and everything. Everything was going great. The new growth was already maturing beautifully. And all of a sudden, the pseudobulb, not at the leaf joint, but the pseudobulb itself got black. And I thought, yeah, well, that's not happening. I capped it because I had another growth on the way. What is this? So this one never matured and it just said, oh, okay, let's just grow another new growth. Here we are. And now another little oddball. It's the triple whammy. What is this? What is this? <laughs> More cartwheels around the patio. We are going to have a third growth, hopefully maturing beautifully. I've got my hopes up because nothing happened with the pseudobulb here. Everything is beautiful and I'm not going all the way down because I peel my pseudobulbs in a different way. But what is going on here? Absolutely digging this orchid. She always blooms for me. And you can see there are magnesium deficiencies as well. So I wonder if some of the rot came because of magnesium deficiency. Certainly it wasn't calcium deficiency because my Top Gun Cattleyas, they get a lot of calcium and even more so this year. So whatever happened there still remains a mystery. Thankfully it didn't spread. Thankfully this growth still produced new roots. Thankfully this growth grew beautifully, will produce roots, and here we have a stonker coming. I am just blown away. Love, love, love this. Yes, never mind the deficiencies. We're working with the front of the orchid more than we are now working with the back. <laughs> Can't exactly end on a high note because, well, this video, well, no, wait a minute. I may just end this video on a high note. I have something else to show you that is a double whammy and I'm just way happy days. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. This is my Lelia Tenebrosa variety Aurea. Non-bloomer, but we're working on that too. Eventually she may bloom for us. So she grew this growth somewhat during the winter, which is of course not exactly representative of what Alelia tenebrosa can do. Non-bloomer, non-bloomer. <laughs> and then she had a little bit of a, what is this, why? You know, a little bit concerned that something was going on there and that's why she came out with a very puny little growth. And then she got back into action. I don't know what interference she had, but look at what is happening here. So I can actually say we have, let's say two and a half new growths within the same 12 month period, if that is considered a season. The other orchids I was categorizing within a six month period, because that was just not normal in my collection, but yep. Look at this growth coming. I'm a little bit concerned because now we've got very dry air. Let's just peel this back to make sure that there's no rot kicking in. Look at this growth. Isn't it a beaut? Uh, we've got a sheath. I'm not going to hold my breath, but we've got roots. Roots, roots, roots. 
from three new growths within the same season being, in this case, a cycle of 12 months. My Tenebrosa has never done that. I also had my Iricolor with two growths within a 12 month cycle, which normally takes 12 months to grow one growth. <laughs> it's just been amazing. I wonder if my high humidity has anything to do with it. I cannot tell you. I am just glad it has happened. It could also be a little bit of the orchids maturing beyond what they normally were in previous years, getting all grown up and such. Whatever it is, I'm so glad it happened during a time of year where I could fertilize heavily because normally I am tidying all the orchids that you saw over tiptoeing around the fertilizer regime, accepting smaller growths because the light levels are low, hoping for blooms. It's just been, you know, the winters get a little bit messy. <laughs> this has been awesome. So if you're still with me, thank you so very, very much for still being here. I hope that you can share in my excitement. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, we're gonna do a double whammy that has nothing to do with growth, but excite. I am going to try and hold as still as possible. <laughs> we are invading into the space of Mayangrecum sesquipedale variety bossery. And I hope you can see that there's one spike over here. <laughs> Hopefully you can see. I know it's so minute, but it has grown since the last time I discovered it. And there's another one right in here. I can't tell on the screen if you can see it. I sincerely hope so, but there's two spikes. That would be two years since we've had a double spike on the bossery. Back in 2020, she did bloom with two spikes. Then in 21, 22, yeah, well, she just bloomed with one spike. And here we are. <laughs> and as long as yours truly here doesn't make a mistake, we are going to be blessed with a beautiful show from the bossery. And while we're here, may I just show you something that's been, oh, just keeping my mind so inspired. Look at the new root coming right out of the stem. It is insanely gorgeous. Look at that. So yeah, I haven't checked my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Now it is a bit bittersweet that yes, I'm looking forward to the spikes, but I also know the time of year when this orchid is going to bloom. And that's not a time of year I do well in, let's just put it that way. <laughs> but it is so nice to see that during the season, this orchid has put on some substantial growth. There is my Crestwood. They're not ready to come in yet, but I have a feeling that next week we're at least going to put a woolly blanket over them because one of the nights is going to drop to 13 degrees. So we shall see. I'm not ready to bring them in. I would like to wait until mid-November because the nights get a little bit too cool, but the days are still warm. It's a bit of a juggle. It's a bit of a struggle at the moment to make the right call. But here they are right now, still perfection. If I make a mistake, well, at least we've got this footage before I make that mistake. It was wonderful to have you. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you've subscribed to the channel and I appreciate the like that you gave the video. I wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition, as always, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.